when our original papers for the organization were uh, put together, they reference um, having sustainable communities. They reference having sound land use. And those were things that really weren't being talked about at the time. Uh, much of the environmental work and environmental movement at that time, or prior to that, was about protecting places, sort of locking it away and, and sort of, you know, drawing lines on a map. Where this was much more about how do people learn to live and be in our state in a way that's more sustainable. And so I started in early 90s, and from the start, it attracted me. It was a place where I felt a connection to the approach of the organization and, and how it went about um, trying to protect Washington. At that point in time, the organization was still, I would say, a true council of organizations that brought their interests to a table. And we got some good work done. But I think that there was a feeling, and I had a feeling, that we could be much more effective if we focused our work, if we prioritized our work, if we put our work into strategic programs and plans and mapped out a course forward rather than just sort of a, a continual sort of bit of whatever rises to the top or who has the loudest voice at the table. And so during the 90s into the 2000s, we really transferred over to an organization that had um, much more of a focused plan, our own programs and, and um, uh, campaigns that we wanted to advance. And um, from that, I feel like the organization matured and became much more strategic in its efforts to protect Washington State. It was 2001, I believe. Um, there was a coming together of, we need to figure out how to get smarter and how to work together. And from that was born the Environmental Priorities Coalition, which um, now is 20 plus groups at the time. I think maybe there were 12, 15 groups, something like that, that came together and said, let's try to figure out what are the most important things we want to try to accomplish for the environment in the state capitol this year. The initial win was a bill that banned mercury in products. And that was um, the first win that we had as a coalition. And it was, it was a big lift. Um, and we wouldn't have done it if we hadn't prioritized it. And I think people were really surprised that it passed. And they were like, wow, there is power in this. When we work together, we can get amazing things done. I would say one of the most exciting convenings in coalitions, so is probably one of the most recent ones, which is the Climate Alliance, started as the Alliance for Jobs and Clean Energy which is a bringing together of the historically white environmental community and communities of color, medical professionals, faith community, labor, business, all interests that care and want to do something about climate change, but come at it from their own unique perspective and needs, and bringing those perspectives and needs to the table and figuring out what a common approach to me, that is um, the future of how we're going to do our work. It's how we're doing our work now, but um, it's evolving and we're learning. Um, and it's really exciting to see that happening. And I think that we will be approaching work across issues in that way as we move forward. The environmental movement needs to continue to build coalitions and in authentic ways. When I say that, I don't mean sort of the coalitions of the time of our founding, which were all people who sort of viewed themselves through a particular environmental lens with an E, um, but build coalitions of people who care about a healthy world. Um, so 
as we look to protect Puget Sound, we think about it, how do we go about our work through a coalition effort, and how do we join with other interests who depend on a healthy Puget Sound. Well, actually, one of the things that most inspires me these days is that younger generations are fired up. They're mad. They don't like what they see happening in the world, and they want it to change. And they want the grown-ups to either fix it or get out of the way. Um, and uh, that's inspiring to me. So I think we really need to think about how to work with and alongside and connect to that energy in a way that brings as much power as quickly as we can. And younger people don't see environmental issues in a silo. Um, you know, I have kids, I have a son in college. He doesn't view it as a separate thing. It's part of the world that he's growing up in and he thinks about climate change just as a reality of modern day world in which everything else has to be um, uh, thought through and um, so we need to approach our issues if we want to engage young people and engage the power they have we need to approach issues in a way that they see them um, and listen to them so we can understand what they are thinking and help them Bring the tools that we have as experience and, and power and connections so that we can bring their power to the top as quick as we can.